Hey, this is this is indeed Walt from the Comic Book Men, and uh, you're listening to the I Walter Show. Hey, what's this? Whoa, who are you? I'm Helvetica Cabold, the social justice superhero with a heart of gold, and that, my dear, is a racism decoder ring. A what? Let me show you how it works. Just put the ring on your finger and then point it to whatever you want to decode. Whoa, that's what that really means? You can also use it on magazines. Come on now. What? On your TV. Breaking news, tidal wave of immigrants flood the border. Warning, brown people are coming to get you. Gotta be kidding me. You can also use it on tweets, Facebook, even on politicians. You can use your decoder ring just about anywhere because racism is part of a mindset that's everywhere. But what do we do when we reveal racism? Never fear, my dear. We can take racism head on by consuming a nutritious diet full of healthy values. Mmm, that sounds good. Collect them all. Sexism decoder ring, classism decoder ring, homophobia decoder ring, and anti-immigrant decoder ring. Reality checks the cereal that keeps it real. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I, Walter. I, Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. And yes, this is Walter. I'm back again. I actually want to do a show. Um, I said I was going to do one, and then guess I am now doing one because I'm a little leery about doing it because it's actually it is Tuesday, June 7th at almost 3.30. Now, I got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so I'm actually taking off of work a little bit, too. Uh, be late again. So, and I hate doing this. I've been doing this a lot, but I really need to go to the doctor. I've been having these almost like it's been giving me migraines and really bad pains in my head and the back of my spine. So, I figured, you know what? I got to really get this looked at. I can't fool around with this any longer. But I was like, by I told a friend, I texted my one friend, Todd, today. I said, listen, by. Hook or by crook, I am definitely doing a show because I found some article. I can just throw another dig at my, um, you know, no offense, my friend Matt. So I figured I got to do it. Um, you know, I, I hate to, but when when something just like really bothers me, I just, yes, I do harp on it. But, um, you know, this is the only way I can get rid of that, that niche. Um, so I actually didn't get this from any, either one of my friends, neither Matt nor from Todd, but I saw this. Somebody put this up on Facebook the other day. And by the way, before I forget to mention this, I actually called um, this, story, this title of this episode tonight, um, Bad Boss Bad Boss Can Make Employees Sick. So I, I, I basically named it Bad Bosses. So I want to talk a little bit about that. This Saturday, I'm actually going to see Kevin Smith again. I think when he sees me, he kind of gets scared. Um, and then I wanted to also mention, well, I'll do a little brief thing right this second. I don't know how much more I can say, but they put up an official trailer for Yoga Hosers. I watched it. I actually really thought it looked pretty interesting. I thought it looked pretty cool, but I want to read. I hate reading stuff because I know I'm going to fuck it up, but I want to read this article, um, titled study reveals that bad boss can make employees sick. The reason I wanted to, uh, mention this, I actually made it into a, PDF file, so I don't know where it came from source-wise. But somebody put this up, and it was like, okay, and it doesn't just apply to bosses making you. Oh, they compared it to like cigar, uh, secondhand smoke. That's how bad it is you could how how hazardous it is that having a you know 
a boss, at least for this article, but this can also apply to other employees, having a hostile environment can actually ruin your health physically. So, And you should see the percentages. I'll read that. So it was like, okay, I'm going to do a story at least really um, briefly on that and maybe just make that my show. Also, in the beginning, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, not like hysterically funny, but I heard, I saw this thing about, you know, we live in such a politically correct world anymore, and it's always about minorities being victimized. So I saw this, somebody put this up, and I think they were serious about it. I don't know, but it was a joke video that was a minute long um, about political correctness, and it had the stereotypical, um, you know, two a young black girl and this superhero black woman who said, yeah, if you eat this uh, breakfast cereal, you'll be able to see all the racism in our in our um, in our society in the U.S. And it was like I, I saw that and it was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This is a joke. But it was for real. It was actually something something really made. I mean, I know it was tongue in cheek, but it was a lot of digs on how, you know, oh, you know, watch out for. Um, these people that are um, so and so people because they're you know we live in a racist society we live in a um, what do you call it it's like what are you talking about this is ridiculous you're, you're making things seem like they're more racist than they really are so unfortunately even though I do take offense to that I can't say that because then I'll be the bad guy so um I just had to play that either way. I hope I sound okay because, honestly, I, I didn't do any um, sound check level tonight. I'm just going to wing it tonight because I want to get this done before, you know, long because i got to get up tomorrow morning and i got to go to a doctor's appointment in the afternoon. And, then, you know, you know when waiting in the doctor's office, you're going to be there all night, all, all day, all night. I'm, 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 I'm going to be up all night. I'll see the sun come up again. So I did that. Um, I did go to... The comic book convention, too, by the way. Um, I did go on the one in Philly. Now, that was interesting. It's just amazing how much time you can save by what time of day you leave. It was on Sunday. It was very crowded. Now, Saturday would have been a nightmare, but it was Sunday. It was very crowded. You could barely move around. I got left the house around, I would say, about 9 or 10 o'clock. It opened at 10, though. And it said on my GPS, I use the Google one now, which is probably the best one you can use. You want to use a GPS. It had taken me no more than a half an hour from my house to Philadelphia. I've never gotten down Philly because you got to go down well, from where I live. King of Prussia is nearby. I take 76. And the fastest I've ever gotten down to Philly was over about an hour. So like a little over an hour, maybe a little longer, 45 minutes if you're lucky. 30 minutes. It said 30 minutes. It was like, holy crap, there's no way I'm going to get down in Philadelphia. And my mother that day, she was p- making me panic because she said, oh, well, there's a bike race going on down there. There's this going on. They got roads closed. You don't. You want to take the train down. You shouldn't go down at all. Now, I really, deep down inside, my heart was telling me I really wanted to go to one in Washington, D.C. because of Doctor Who. But that's a three-hour drive. And so you compare three hours to 30 minutes, there's a big difference. And believe it or not, minus some idiot drivers on the on the highway, I did get down there exactly in the amount of time they said. I got down in Philadelphia in 30 minutes on 76. That is unheard of, folks. So I was very pleased to know I could do that. I didn't realize Philly was we were that close to Philadelphia. But believe it or not, yeah, we are. I think the longest part of the ride was not 76 um, which you will find some morons on there, it was actually trying to get over the King of Prussia was the most difficult part. Not actually going the King of Prussia, but it's around that area. The, you know, I basically go straight from Audubon, or yeah, I guess it is, it's Audubon straight over into um, picking up 76. You know, I get off, there's an, an exit towards uh, Devon, Whereas, like, people like to do when they spray paint or design, make a Devo, which most people don't even know who Devo is anymore, so it doesn't hold the same humor as it did years ago in a, a race to end on Devon and made a Devo. Um, but, yeah, that's the direction I go. And I got down there. It was great. I, I got 
Um, I made it like maybe one slight small wrong turn, not really that big of a deal. Just looking for parking, basically. Got into the parking garage. Uh, it's called a Chinatown Parking Garage. Perfect. Walking distance to both the Trocadero, because I'll be down there this week, and also, of course, to the convention center. And my favorite place, which I'll probably hit again this week, weekend, this coming weekend, because last weekend I went to the comic convention, which was expensive, but I thought it was worth it. Um, got some pictures. I might go a little further detail a little later. I do want to get this story out, of, and I got a couple other ones, nothing that spectacular. This one I'm going to force myself to try to read through, um, the one I made into a PDF file. So there was that. Um, so, yeah, it was just nice to know. Again, I didn't realize how close I lived to Philly. One thing I do want to put in right now, though, I want to discuss. Now, I've said this before, and it sounds like I'm just, again, being, well, well which my friend will agree with me. He won't agree. I mean, he won't say, no, Walter, you're just, you're just downing yourself again. I don't think that way of you. No, he'll agree with me. Um, and that is to say that I said, well, insurance has increased by at least a hundred to two hundred dollars. Um, what we paid last, I paid last time. So here I, I told my one friend Todd this. I said, listen, my, vo- my, um, my insurance from the last time I made a payment went up about a hundred bucks, and it was like I can't believe that. Why did it go up? What did I do wrong? So then I remembered that. Um, God, I gotta actually look this up and see if I can find it now. I wasn't gonna do this, but I can't remember her name. The woman who does those flow or access flow in those commercials for insurance. I'm gonna put it in because I did that today and I figured out who who the actress was and the evil, even the insurance company she works with. So I'm going to see. So I want to say Prudential, but I'm not sure. Fictional character. Progressive. Okay, so I was a little off. It's Progressive. My one friend, his ex-girlfriend, she actually, she knew somebody, my friend's ex-girlfriend who um, in New York, that's where that actress comes from who plays Flo. And her name is Stephanie. Courtney, Stephanie Courtney, um, she's actually from New York, and uh, a friend's girlfriend, my friend Todd's girlfriend, she actually knew somebody who went to high school with that woman. So she's, I looked up her net worth, which doesn't sound like a lot, but hey, that's pretty damn good as more than I'll make in a lifetime. She's actually net her net worth. I thought she would actually be worth more as $5 million. That's nothing to sneeze at, though. I mean, her present net worth, and she's making, still making commercials. And she's actually acted in movies, too. I didn't know that. She had small parts in some, because um, I, I looked it up, but I was, like, surprised. I'm, I don't remember from any movies. Maybe they were, like, TV movies or TV shows. She got small parts. I, I give her credit, but she's made more of a, a pre, you know, a presence, so to speak, and doing those flow commercials. Some of them are actually really funny. But, um, yeah, I had to look up Progressive, though, because I'm like, for one thing, after I heard my, my friend Todd's voicemail today, he actually put in there, by the way, he, he put in the voicemail, he says, yeah, I keep on forgetting to mention this, but he said, yeah, I got, I have myself, I have State Farm. My friend Todd says, yeah, I have State Farm. And he said, for no reason at all, he says, I'm definitely going to question before I pay it, just this last time, his insurance went up by $100 from what he paid before. Now, he hasn't have, had any traffic tickets, um, no traffic accidents. He's never had any since I've known him. Um, he's had speeding tickets, but he hasn't had any of those for all. So what was the purpose that both of ours, ironically enough, go up by $100? So then I remember, that's why I went into Progressive, though, that commercial for advertisement on insurance. And I actually looked into that, by the way. I put all my information in, like, what's your, um, you know, they did a background check on me. It was actually $200 more for Progressive. And there was some other insurance company that did just send me out some information on getting insurance with some other, again, some other place. They were also about 200 250 more than what I'm paying now for State Farm. Now, 
believe it or not, even with State Farm going up $100, it's still the cheapest out of all the places I've looked at. So, And they actually got the best coverage because I was actually losing certain things on Progressive, and, um, which I pay less for under State Farm. And State Farm, if you have an accident like an animal runs out of the – like I had a deer ran right into my car. Literally, it ran right into my car. It smashed my gl- my lenses on the front of my car. It put a big dent on the side of the car. Um, that was all paid for. And um, – my insurance did not change. It, it's changed ever so slightly. It was this last time, though. Again, my friend never had any accidents, but his insurance went up by $100 to so State Farm. But then I'm like looking. It was like, wait a minute. They're all going up. Now, one thing I, they did actually offer that to me with State Farm is they have that thing. Have you ever seen that commercial where there's the, the people, they call them um, insurance suckers or something? Like they basically cling to your insurance plan not literally but they basically your insurance goes up for idiot drivers who are constantly getting to car accidents um just driving like morons in general that causes according to that commercial at least that um progressive says oh we we have a way around that we're not going to charge you more for other people you know getting insurance under our plan we're not going to charge you more for the other idiots out there. So, and it was like, that's where I got this idea of like, wow, I think this is really what's happening. You got so many people that are illegal immigrants getting um, driver's license. You got people that have suspended license, um, people that are just idiots. Tonight when I came home, some kid was blasting his car in probably his radio up and down our street. I just got in the house at one o'clock. So why isn't this kid, like, at a job or getting ready for a job the next morning? I don't care if you're off in school. He's obviously being irresponsible and ignorant, so he raced up and down our street at 1 a.m. I think it's the same moron, by the way, on our street that my parents complain about. This this person does this even um, – he does this at certain times that even drives them nuts. I mean, normal people are getting going to bed at a decent time. I don't care if you're off from college or high school, but they're actually getting up on their time off. You know, you either go away or whatever, but you're doing something responsible. This idiot just loves, doesn't have a job, and we're probably paying for him anyway. So I have one story about that with the, the people that are sponging off the government. I have one story in my mix with that. Not directly like what I just mentioned, but something on that line. How's that? So, um, hey, real quick, maybe I'll mention that again. I hope I don't. I hope I can just get this out one time, one time only. But it was pretty funny. Um, but Rush Limbaugh, he's on vacation the whole entire week this week. And he actually said, he says, well, I would, um, to, um, today, this afternoon, I guess, because it is technically Tuesday morning now, um, the Democrats are going to be running, I guess, in California, I guess it will be the last phase before they decide who's going to run for the president uh, presidency under um, the Democrat Party, if it's going to either be Hillary or is going to be Bernie Sanders. Now, Rush said, you know what? If I knew for some reason Bernie Sanders was going to get it, I probably would stop my vacation or my time off and come in just to talk about it. But he says that's not going to happen. He says no matter how many uh, states that Bernie Sanders win wins, it's not going to matter because they already have this our corrupt system, especially with the Democrats, their corrupt system, has already made sure that no matter how much Bernie Sanders is loved by, you know, majority of people, he's not going to get the proper amount of delegates to win, uh, to run for, you know, to run for the presidency as a Democrat. He said that Bernie Sanders was only placed in there for one reason and one reason only. They had to make it look like Hillary Clinton had some type of competition that was running against her. So they picked Bernie Sanders with the um, the idea that he wouldn't even get close to beating her in any of the states, but he, he ended up doing so. So the whole thing was an arranged-type fixed ordeal to make it look like she had 
somebody running against her. So it didn't look like they just handed her, you know, handed over to her. You're going to be running for the uh, Democrat Party. So I read tonight in a couple different articles that, yeah, it looks at this point she's she's pretty much going to get all the delegates she needs, or I guess for the Democrats are called super delegates, that she is definitely today when they run. It's already done um, because the whole thing has been fixed since day one, that she will be the first woman, quote unquote, the first uh, woman running for president. So they don't care that she is, you know, did got this, uh, got into running for the Democrat Party through um, corruption and lies. They don't care about that. And they're hoping that the Democrats will get her in office because no matter what anybody says, they're going to say, once again, this is discriminatory because you're picking on a woman. That's what they want because they got. They're going to have eight years of Obama doing that with saying anytime anything like the Republicans were afraid to touch him because they're afraid be, of being hit with, oh, you're being racist. So they had that for eight years. They had a, a clean sale on you know anything they wanted to do. They made sure they, they could do whatever they wanted, the, the Democrats, because there was nobody to stop them. Everybody was too afraid to say anything without seeming racist or discriminatory against the first black president. So if they get Hillary, they're going to have another eight years. That means it's going to be 16 years of this nonsense. I don't even know. We already are, are ruined as a country through through the seven and a half years we've had already with Obama. But you're going to have another eight years if Hillary gets in the first time. It's going to be a done deal. So I'm a little bit leery on Trump getting it, but I'm thinking, I hope he doesn't hold back. He, you know, basically takes the boxing gloves off and he fights um, to the bitter end like dirty uh, as he gets as dirty and as gritty as he needs to to get um, people listen to him. And it, it has worked. So I hope this will help. I am glad we got Donald Trump, though, because I think he was he does stand a stronger chance because he will hold no punches back and he doesn't care if she's a woman or a black person or anything. She, he just does not care. He's going to say or a Mexican because I've heard something loosely on the um, Rush Limbaugh show. He wasn't in obviously this week. It was somebody else. But um, he won't hold back. He doesn't care what your background is. He doesn't care what your skin color is. He's going to tell you what he thinks, um, you know, without holding back. So we need somebody that strong. I don't even think, honestly, I would have been a little leery. I think we would have ran into the same situation if we did have Ted Cruz. I don't think, you know, Ted Cruz would have backed down a little bit too much, and Hillary would have definitely got it. She's going to have a run for her money, at least, with Trump. So there's that old saying, you know, you fight fire with fire. Um, that's the only in this situation that is absolutely true. So I just wanted to get in a little bit of that. Now, again, the story is not too long, but I always find a way to, to mess it up. And again, this was the uh, um, my main focus for tonight that I wanted to do a show. And I, I said to a friend in a text or a call, I said, I don't care how I do it. I got to do a show on this study. Again, it's just to. Um, basically prove a point that it's not just me being a crybaby, that this is a real serious situation. This is not a joke um, about my work situation and that it is not all me. I mean, my hair has literally in the last, I would say the last couple of months has really just fallen out. And that's from stress. There's no other way to put it. It's definitely from stress. So um, when I saw this story, it was like, okay, I definitely, without a doubt, need to read this. So I'm going to see if I can get the title. Okay, I'm going to just blow it up a little bit. Again, it's a PDF file I made it into. There's a way. That's the only thing I like. Certain things with Windows. Windows does certain things much better than um, than the Mac on the, in the art side. Well, on the audio files and stuff, yeah, I think Windows is a little bit easier to do that stuff with. But um, picture files and video and stuff, Mac is just far, far better. 
Anyway, just to read this again, this title of the story, I don't know what date it is, again, because I just ripped uh, the story off the web page. Study reveals that a bad boss can make employees sick. So now get this, though, because remember, I heard from my friend one uh, two weeks ago now. He's probably like loving this. It's like I am living um, rent free in his head right now. I'm sure he thinks that and it's kind of true. It's just because he really did piss me off. Dude, I love you, but you just really fucking piss me off. Um, so I have to find stuff. This story, whoever gave it to me was it was uh, the story was heaven sent from in my opinion. Because I never thought I was going to find something that would just prove that it's not me exaggerating the truth. So here, let me just read this. There's a bullet point that says, for 75% of the Americans, bosses are a major cause of stress at work. And it says, a Lincoln article published by Quartz Magazine reveals that a bad boss can be as harmful to employees as passive smoking. So I have that one aunt. She, you know, had suffered with passive smoking for years from some boyfriend she had. And now she's got cancer. Um, she's got tumors in both her lungs. So you're not going to get tumors. You can develop can- uh, cancer from stress, though. Perhaps not in your lungs, but you can develop cancer cells um, um, just from high levels of stress. Anyway, it says the article also says that the longer you stay in a job working for someone who stresses you, the greater the damage is to your physical and mental health. These are exactly two things I suffered with from my job for the past 14 years. It has gotten progressively worse, though. According to Quartz, data from the American Psychology Association shows that 75% of American workers believe their bosses are a major cause of stress at work. However, 59% of them would not leave the job. So it goes on to say, statistics show that employees get used to their job despite the fact that they are unhappy, exactly what I'm in right now. This further complicates their process of uh, resignation, you know, resigning, as they are no longer motivated to search for a healthier work environment, which co- uh, could improve their situation. Everything I am dealing with is exactly spoken out in this article. Researchers at Harvard Business School and Stanford University in the United States gathered data from over 200 studies and found that stress at work could be a harmful, as harmful to your health as exposure to a considerable amount of smoke from other people's cigarettes, just like passive smoking. So there you go again. Now, my one friend said he was laughing about it. He said that, you know, basically it's me exaggerating the truth that all this stuff that I'm built up my head is on me. It's not on um, that the, these people are really being this vicious to me. But yet here I see an article that says, now this is saying it's from management issues, but it can also be from fellow employees doing the exact same things that stress a person out, which I said. So that a whole thing of me saying about people ostracizing me, well, it's not in the article, Walter, but you're reading, um, you're trying to divert from the truth and try to find a way to point the blame on me. So there is no blame to put on me. This blame that you're putting on me is actual now been, you know, basically scientifically proven that, yes, if you work in a stressful environment, you're killing yourself physically and mentally. This is why I needed to read this. The main reason for stress at work for most employees is the risk of losing their jobs. Exactly what I'm concerned about. As a consequence, chances are that these employees are 50% more prone to health problems than their colleagues. So that's exactly, I'm in that 50% range right there. 
Now, I said in the beginning of this, let me go back to the very beginning of this story. I hope I don't lose my spot. 75%, though, of Americans are under the complaint that it's their job that causes this high level of stress, which is equal to secondhand smoke. Um, employees in a demanding job are expected to deliver more than they can give, and their increase it, this increases their chances to acute health problems by 35%. So that's not the overall, but it increases your health risk by 35%, which I've had physical and mental problems. And now it says there's a part that says survival. In some cases, the problems with the bosses are merely a matter of um, looks like affinity. However, there are many bosses like they're referring to this woman, Miranda Presley from The Devil Wears Prada in real life. But how do you recognize whether you belong to the first category or the second um, it says bad bosses are uh, um, overly aggressive, narcissistic, and even violent sometimes. They often say phrases like, we're always done, uh, we've always done it uh, like it, um, done it like the other, okay, it says, let me reread that, I apologize, folks. They often say phrases like, we've always done done it like and then it says that's what it says you can't count yourself luck you can count yourself lucky to even have a job so and i've heard these phrases before from other people yes i have and this there's another quote and it says and this place is a mess when i'm not around referring that the boss was saying that the place is a mess if you're not if he's not around or she's not around like, you're basically incompetent. It says, given the present market conditions, it is not an easy decision to quit a job and start over entirely. This is because there's not many jobs out there, and there is such a high level of unemployment because the jobs that are being given away pay low wages or they're just given to um, non-speaking Americans that are illegally in our country. The jobs are going to them first, which makes it even more difficult for us to get, um, you know, as an American, to get a decent job or a job at a decent uh, pay scale level. And then you got to deal with all this humiliation in within the workplace, which just actually does point out. It's not just about bosses, believe me. So anyway, it says, this soon becomes a habit and a level of motivation uh, of motivation sinks, that the motivation sinks. Here are some simple strategies that can help you survive moments of professional crisis, which I don't even think that works all the time, but I will read them anyhow. Make a list of the day's goals and strike the items off as you complete them. This feeling of having done something can help you move on. Well, actually, it you can. It looks good on paper, but it's actually not going to really change your situation. I'm sorry. The second thing they say you can do to help alleviate your stress: turn off your email and your work phone over the weekend, and then help yourself recharge your personal battery for a short while. You know, so you can recuperate. But you know what? Sometimes I hate to say it, that is not enough. That is not going to um, change the situation because. You know, it's like one of those things you're taking out of the stress factor for at least 48 hours, but then you once again, you go back to it, and you it starts all over again, and it's like a jolt, a physical jolt to your body, which is as worse as though you didn't have, you know, um, you didn't have it. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is they're trying to say, oh, yeah, if you take a, a stress reliever for a second... That actually helps your body recuperate. Well, 40 hours, 48 hours is not enough. Now, I was out for six months, and it doesn't matter. So what I'm trying to say is even six months seemed like a great time. I definitely made a lot of recovery. But at the same time, sometimes that's not even enough. So um, you might think it is, but I hate to say it. No, it's not. So... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, if if we lived in the perfect world, my thing would be to get a job completely, completely away from the whole stress factor. Unfortunately, um, again, it's like that article did state that some people are just afraid to leave their job because they're getting paid so well. And I am one of them. I'm getting paid very well. So it's very difficult for me to leave a job that has – and the, the fact that now – you're going to, um, the benefits are very important too. Um, that I'm not going to find another job that pays benefits, you know, pay for my benefits like this job does. Most jobs are trying to wean away from paying your benefits. They can't afford to pay them. So that's another issue too. So anyway, I did, that's my main thing I wanted to do. I got at least 20 minutes out of that story. Well, I talked about other things too. What am I talking about? So. Um, I'm trying to get something that's a little bit closer to what I just read. And I'm not doing a very good job, by the way, with that. So um, I'll just read them as they go along my stories because then I'll make it pretty much probably close to an hour, maybe if I'm lucky. Once again, um, on a lighter note, um. For those who are interested, it's not going to come out until this fall, but they, uh, Kevin Smith is doing a tour uh, state, uh, what do you call it, not statewide, throughout the United States. Now, funny, it's funny because I'm going to be seeing him at his Smodcast thing down in Philadelphia where he basically talks about Smodcast. Well, Smodcast Productions is what Yoga Hosers, I haven't mentioned it yet again, Yoga Hosers came out of his Smodcast to make a film for tweens. And he wanted something that he could feel safe of his daughter watching. And actually, it's basically geared towards young teenagers, very young teenagers or, or even tweens again. Um, and how today's times, how, you know, tweens basically and teenagers, um, how their behavior, how they react to things. So that's what Yoga Hosers came about. Um, I did watch the trailer, like I said. I'm looking at it now, actually. I'm going to let it run through. And, yes, it looks really, really funny. Even for, I like kids' movies to begin with. I always get picked on about that. Um, but there's a lot of recognizable faces in this movie. I just can't name them. The guy who actually does the Smodcast with Kevin Smith, which I will see in Philadelphia this Saturday, he's actually in the film itself um, as a Nazi. Um, so it's kind of funny. I'm gonna. Ha- I mean, we don't really get to ask him questions, and yeah, you get to see the bratwurst Nazis, which is actually Kevin Smith. Um, this you know leftover Nazi made these brat bratwurst Nazis again, who are all one inch high. Kevin Smiths that look like um, Nazis, but Canadian Nazis, which is, makes it even more ridiculous. But there's a lot of people from, you know, the View Ask You universe in this film. Um, and they, they it's funny, like, when they want to use the, the girls, you know, his daughter or Johnny Depp's daughter want to use the, the shit word, they actually put an emoji or whatever you call it over their mouth, you know, the little shit guy. They put it over their mouth instead of saying shit. And I'm sure they're going to do that in the film because the whole premise of this film is that they, it's geared towards kids. And for some reason, oh, I'm looking at it right now. Um, they actually gave, like they do, uh, they put Stan Lee in the film, but he's doing a cameo the same way he does cameos and all of Kevin Smith's, uh, Kevin Smith. And uh, Stan Lee is doing a cameo um, the same exact way as he does like those goofy parody cam- cameos in, because um, they show it on the trailer, as he does in his, his own comic books that were made in the movies. Like the ones Stan Lee did, like Spider-Man, um, all the Marvel comics, most of them, they kind of conglomerate him that he Stan Lee was responsible for those, so he does cameos in all these 
Marvel movies. Well, he did star in Kevin Smith's Mall Rats, so he actually got Stan Lee to do a cameo in Yoga Hosers, and it's pretty funny because he's just playing some strange character. This one, he's like a security guard or a cop, it looks like. So it's funny, and I mean, I give credit for that because Stan Lee is actually, um, I guess... Is it in his 90s or something like that? And this man is still going strong, so it's really impressive. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it because, he, yeah, he's, it says police. He's supposed to be a Canadian police because this whole thing takes place in Canada. And it's actually a sequel of some sort, of um, which is going to be a trilogy, um, f- as a follow-up from um, Tusk. Now, Tusk was a pure horror movie in my opinion most people said it was a comedy horror but it's basically to me it was a horror movie so yoga hosers is more um less on the violence and more of a kids kind of movie like i'm trying to think some of the kids movies that you grew up with which i never really watch I mean, and it's on the tip of my tongue you can't think of it but it's on this line and um that movie with a bunch of kids that find a treasure and um, some oaf and stuff. Um, they were supposed to make a sequel of it. It's on the tip of my tongue, folks. But, you know, it's like basically those kids' movies where they get themselves into um, finding goofy monsters and stuff. It's, it's, it's a pure tween movie. And it actually looks very impressive. Um, it says um, Yoga Hosers Trawler 2016 Johnny Depp. Justin Long uh, movie is in HD if you're looking on YouTube. But the part, what I was going to mention with Stan Lee, he's got like, just to make sure you know it's Canadian with the ah uh, or ah. Uh, I forget how they say, uh, Canadians say the one word all the time. Um, Stan Lee has in the background a box of Pucky Charms. I'm sure this was actually because I think even. Um, Tusk was technically supposed to be taking place in Canada. Believe it or not, he actually shot in California, if I remember correctly. Actually, and in North Carolina, I think, too. Something like that. Um, Or Georgia, one of those. So, yeah, he he shot the whole entire film, even Tusk, in the U.S., but he tried to make it look like, which it was, and he tried to try to make it look like it was Canada. So I'm going to see if there's anything else worth mentioning. Um, the movie, like I said to me, just looks hilarious. Um, sometimes that's what I like about the kids' movies. They're very lighthearted. And if they're like even the the horror movies for kids is a little bit much more lighthearted than the stuff you take up with on the seriousness of adult horror movies. Sometimes they're just way too much. So, and again, it has Kevin Smith's... Uh, daughter and also um who is a johnny depp's daughter in the film to me like i said it just looks pretty funny um i think they're they did a pretty damn good job i don't know i I can't say much more but you know i it definitely looks like kevin smith's at least even though he made a tween movie is going back to his roots now they do throw a joke in there. It's an inside joke for the people of the View Ask You universe, the people who are diehard fans in the in the trailer, diehard fans of Clerks, because one, it's either his daughter or Johnny Depp's daughter. I think it was uh, Kevin Smith's daughter. She actually does say, I'm not even supposed to be here today. So, you know, that comes right out of Clerks. So he made sure that he put that line in there. I thought it was pretty clever. I thought it was pretty funny. So I'm actually looking forward to I wish he would just, like, show it down in Philadelphia. I would love to see his film. Um, I've already bought my ticket to see him down in the truck. If he wants to show us the film, I'm not going to have a problem with it. And he's like, well, I'm losing some money. It's like, dude, I'll pay to go see the movie. Because so obviously, probably, if I like it enough, I'll buy it on DVD or Blu-ray because I bought all his other stuff. And usually his... His diehard fans, like myself, we will give him money because he doesn't ask that much. He doesn't rip you off as much as that Comic Con did, uh, the Wizard Con. You know what? This is the story I'm looking at now. I should have watched a Red Next, and I didn't because I didn't realize I had it so close. But this was pretty interesting. I've never watched those movies of The Conjuring 
or that spinoff movie I started watching. It's on HBO called Annabelle. But um, apparently, I guess they were trying to say this is based upon uh, factual events, which I don't know if I agree or disagree with it. But that's what they're saying, though. So there's an article from I Love Nature, Wellness for People and the Planet. And it says there's a I guess it's an interview. Well, it says an interview you're supposed to watch. It says watch interview with Lorraine Warren where she shows you the real Annabelle in the basement. So scary, this video. So, um, yeah, there's something about that this is based upon something that really did happen. I don't know. They say that about most things, and you find out it's just a bunch of BS just to sell tickets, which I don't blame. I do the same thing. Um, It just says, Gravity Media Productions travels to CT. What is CT? Home of the Conjuring Real Lorraine Warren to interview her. So there's a little story underneath of that, and there's a video you can watch with it. I wonder if it can give me a time. No, it can't. So, yeah, if you want to check that out, again, it's on I Love Nature. Now, this is pretty weird. It's not a .com. This one I've never heard of. I Love Nature.world. So it's not .com, .net. Dot TV. It's dot world. I guess they must have ran out of more um, internet. Uh, what do you call it? I don't even know how that fucking works, but I think it's pretty funny. Dot world. I never heard that one before. Um, hey, one thing that was funny when I was, when I was at. I'm going to jump around tonight. Well, I always do anyway. But this looks really cool. Um, I did find if you go on my Facebook page, I got some really cool pictures. And this one guy loves my pictures. I put up. I didn't get that many people. But I did get a couple of the cosplay women, one, a couple, two guys, I think, because they looked really, really cool. And, um, yeah, at uh, the Wizard Con that I went down on on uh, on Sunday. So, um, I mean, I'm glad for that fact. I figured uh, I'm not going to waste any money in getting people's autographs and stuff like that. It's just a waste of time. The pictures, if you get pictures, they just look like garbage. I didn't want to do that again, so I did not. So I had more of a blast. It cost me 50 bucks to get in, but I had more of, of a blast just taking pictures, and they loved it too for the most part. Most of the uh, women did. It's just asking, hey, can I get a picture of you? It was like, sure. Do you work for some magazine? Do you have a uh, official webpage? I said, no, but it, you know, and they asked me. I try to remember the best I could. But a lot of them actually asked me, can you send me my picture, you know, um, because they're on Facebook or um, Twitter. Actually, one was just on Instagram. So that was kind of unique. Um, So, yeah, the one that was on Instagram was like the most difficult one. Quite honestly, I had a hard time kind of um, remembering her thing. But I did try to get the pictures to the women, but... A couple of them looked not only really good, but um, it also, um, I got a lot of responses back. The ones I really actually liked, also other people liked too. So, hey, I, I was like, God, I, you know, it's not about, what is that old saying? Because I, I proved this fact, by the way. It's not about uh quantity you know it's not about the amount of pictures you take of different people it's a matter of how good your pictures are and how good the people look in the pictures so that being said um sorry i'm laughing some video i I saw before it on um on facebook but yeah i only took like i i i think it says i but a lot of them are like the same pictures I think I had taken about, if I remember correctly, um, let me see if I can find that thing on my Facebook page. I think it's like 62 pictures. But most of them, again, are just, you know, copies of uh, pictures I had taken. So, yeah, my album. Oh, wait, I got to find the album. Let's see if I can do this album. And a couple more of me, and they're not even that interesting, trust me. Okay, actually, it says no profile pictures, no. Okay, Wizard Con. Um, I put it down as Wizard Comic Con 2016. I had 62 pictures, so some of them are a little bit redundant um, because I want to make sure I can get the best possible pictures from these people. 
And that's why you take more than one. Um, I've got to write this guy back. I feel bad. Um, but and I'll throw myself a plug in. But the pictures I had taken, they really seemed to enjoy, which made me really happy. Um, and um, the women, that, the pictures I have taken of them, they were, you know, they were pleased by that. And other people, their friends really liked the pictures I had taken of them. It's like, I was only there on Sunday, and they're making like, hey, thank you so much for taking these pictures. We really liked what you did. Um, I was like, well, I enjoyed personally i enjoyed taking the pictures i had a i had a blast so it was it was a win-win situation for me and for them um and i enjoy like i said if i could make a living out of just take, taking pictures and making a profit off of it i have make i don't make anything off of it right now but if i could i would do it um because i i do again i just have a blast um much more than at my job where i get stressed out so Ooh, I think I might have just got rid of all my... No, I didn't. Good. All my stories. So the WizardCon was fun. Again, it was the 50 bucks wasn't um, too impressive, but it was better than spending two grand on just getting a photo for one second with somebody when they push you through a line, and a line that you wait in for about two hours. It's not worth it for that. But anyway, one thing I saw, because they had the guys, uh, the guy who played uh, um, Chris Helmsworth, and then Chris Evans, who plays Captain America there. And I saw they were, um, had autographed shields of Captain America. And it's like, some of them looked really, really freaking awesome. It was like, I'm not a big comic book fan, but that shield looks really cool. Now, they had the people from Captain America, I guess the new movie with Captain America, Civil War, sign it because... Most of the people were there, minus Robert Downey Jr. and the other chick that's in the movie. I can't remember her name, the one chick. I mean, there's a lot of them, but the one chick who's one of the superheroes. That doesn't wind it down. Actually, it was a couple that weren't there, but there was a lot of characters. I think even the character of Loki, which I think would go under the Thor uh, universe, because I get that stuff confused, honestly. I really don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to these superhero things, because I never read these comics. Um, and I mentioned to a friend, I said, I'm more of a, uh, I might've mentioned this the other day. I'm more of a Captain America, like in those movies, just as much, surprisingly as much as a Superman. Spider-Man's pretty cool, but I think Captain America is like one of my favorites. For some reason, I don't know why, I guess because of the whole thing, he came from like uh, 1942 and he was frozen and came back. Cause I, I just love that era of like World War II which was in the first movie, and just the whole thing with Captain America. It's just a better character, in my opinion, which I never really thought it was that great when you saw him in these cartoons. I never read the comic books, but I remember there was cartoons on. I just didn't think it was that impressive. And I thought Thor was just lukewarm, in my opinion, watching the movies. The actors were pretty cool, but the movies were just okay. But Captain America actually stood out my mind. So anyway, they were selling the... I don't know if they were, but it looks like they were selling shields. They were definitely autographed. I was like, God, I, these actually look pretty cool. I couldn't find any, though, at the comic book convention that were for sale on Sunday, which means they probably sold out, whatever. So I looked them up on eBay. Let me see if I can... Act, oh, yeah, actually, I should open up another page then, huh? Um, which I will do. Let's see. So I bookmarked a couple of these shields. Now, I looked through Amazon and eBay. eBay, you can actually bookmark them. That's the part that's sweet. So, let's see. Watch list. And I looked at some of these shields. Now, there's ones that are aluminum. Um, Zero bid, 16 hours bid now. Wow, that's a low price. Um, And um, another thing that I can't wait for is, because I saw a little bit... They were selling an, an autograph, something totally different, by the way. It was a Harley Quinn um, signed T-shirt that was a replica of the T-shirt. I said, is this from the movie of Suicide Squad? And the guy said, no. He was asking like a couple hundred bucks just because um, Margaret Roby had signed the T-shirt, even though it was a replica of the one she wore in the film. It's like, is this the real T-shirt? No, this is a replica 
He said if we actually got the one for the movie, it would have been going for a couple thousand, not just a couple hundred. It's like, dude, either way, that's kind of a ripoff, isn't it? I mean, I'd love to have her autograph. Actually, I'd love to see her at a convention personally. So that would be something um, I was interested in buying. They actually are now make uh, selling replica bats, some of them autographed, which are ridiculously high, some that are not, that Margaret Roby, playing the part of um, Harley Quinn, has in the movie um, this bat, baseball bat. Now, I think I thought the actual bat went to Harley Quinn, Kevin Smith's daughter. She's actually got the real bat from the film. That thing has got to be worth an arm and a leg. I think they just donated it to her, though. I don't think he even had to pay for it. Knowing that he's a big geek and that he named his daughter after one of his big geek fetishes, which is um, the Suicide Squad. So, or, you know, Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad. Or Harley Quinn, period, from uh, Batman Universe. That's what I should have said. So, anyway... Um, I seen like these these shields of Captain America. Boy, that I really go off on a, on a uh, uh, different direction, and they look really, really fucking awesome. Like the ones I saw there were actually made; they're made out of aluminum. So I was like, "Wow, these are really cool. I wonder how much they're worth. It can't be worth that much. It's just a shield." Well, the fact that Captain America is actually doing a little bit better, um, probably than, in my opinion, what I've heard too. A little bit better than, um, I'm trying to think, a little bit better than the, um, I'm really getting distracted, I apologize about this, than um, the other movie of the X-Men. So it was like, well, you know, the Captain American shield, you would, it's something you just hang on the wall anyway, I understand that. And definitely would take it for fun. It would be fun just to take it to the conventions. But then I looked at the price, and believe it or not, I'm going to have to put this in because I thought I only saved the ones that are made out of PVC, which is basically plastic. Um, some of the ones that are, and they're made by this company. There's different companies to make the Captain America shields. But the ones that look really good are the ones made from this company called Cat Toys. So they make two different types. They make the shields that are PVC, but they look like metal. And those, believe it or not, go for $200, though. Now, if, now the same company makes ones from Cat Toys. And you got to get the ones that are second gen if you do buy the plastic one. Because the other ones, by the way... Let me, uh, oh, okay, good. The other ones are made of aluminum, aluminum basically a metal. And now I'll get that because I'll get this, and that's the cheaper prices. eBay actually for once has the cheaper prices. So I'm going to see if I can find any. I should just put in cap. It says Avengers. Um, you actually got to put in metal, and it should come up. No, actually, they're not. I guess the metal ones aren't either doing that well, so they're putting up more of the cheaper ones. The metal ones went between, I think, about six, $700 stardom. Well, 500 Here's one. One-on-one scale Avengers Captain America aluminum, basically the metal one, alloy cosplay prop, uh, cosplay, uh, play prop, means you basically bring them to the comic book convention. Book conventions does look pretty decent, but the best ones are again are the ones that are made from, um, I'm sorry, from this one called Cat Toys. It's called, literally it's called C A T T O Y S. Cat Toys has actually the best ones. Okay, here we go. Here's one six hundred and fifty dollars. So you can get the ones made of metal, but um, Cat Toys I think is about five seven hundred dollars and up. Too much, 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 much more. Um, well, here's one they say made from Hong Kong. I wonder the catch is though. Um, for fifty bucks, Cat Toys, uh, Captain America, ABBS Shield. Uh, what is that? Avengers ABS Shield Prop Star. 
So, so I don't know if there's the first gen and the second gen version. You want um, you want the second gen if you get the the PVC one. They say I'm actually gonna check this one off as a watch because most of the ones that are uh, the PVC ones don't look that good, and I've never seen one yet that looks. Um, that was made of metal for that cheap. Maybe because they're even selling them. Um, I'm trying to think for. I'll have to check this after I'm done my show, and before I go to bed, because so that's actually pretty impressive for fifty bucks. Um, and these are full scale. It'd be fun, like I said, because I do like going to these comic conventions. I'm not a big superhero fan. But for fifty bucks, it's probably almost worth it um, if you can get one that is um, not too expensive. And I do drive to these things; so I don't mind um, loading the car. Well, again, for even for my one friend Todd, if I could, if it's not that ugly looking, I'd buy one for his birthday. His birthday is actually in June. Fifty bucks is actually not that bad. Um. And again, they got some that actually look pretty decent. So five hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, a little bit over my uh, comfort zone. Here's one for eight hundred dollars. So anyway, I saw these at the convention. Like I said, they looked very, very cool. Um, again, I'm half tempted to buy one for if they're that cheap. Buy one for a friend for his birthday. I think he would get a kick out of it. Um, again, if it looks decent and it's only like 50 bucks, unless there's a catch that they're not telling you about, I probably would seriously consider doing it. Um, yeah, these actually look pretty good. Accurate star 24, 100% positive. Um, yeah, I'm actually tempted to buy this for my friend for his birthday. Hmm. I'll look into it and see if they have two. Anyway, that, that's a different story. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm glad I saw that, by the way, because it's not too expensive. not going to get me into a major debt. I think you get a kick out of it. So, anyway, um, there was that. I did like the convention for those reasons alone. i got to write this one guy back. Um, I already mentioned this, so I'm going to kind of gloss over the story. But I had one P- from PIX11 from one of many sources, but it says Hillary Clinton secures delegates to clinch Democratic nominate, uh, nomination. So that should have been, I thought tomorrow, but I actually, or today, but I guess it was yesterday. I don't know. It says Associated Press counts to pledge delegates, one in the primaries and caucuses and survey of party insiders known as super super gel- delegate show Clinton with an overall support of the required 200 or no 2383 delegates it was a victory uh, that arrived monday nearly 8 years to the day after she can uh, cited her first white house campaign to um, against barack obama so she basically did win so i thought it was for some reason i i had in my mind it was going to be tuesday but it was actually today and rush was absolutely correct on that one by the way so here's the story about what i was saying about the the white trash story that i wanted to read this is no joke it was from 100 percent fed up.com i forget if my one friend todd sent it or my friend Matt, little Matt, put it up, but somebody did. No, actually, I think it was my friend Todd's brother who put it up. Anyway, it says, hoo-ha, e, um, EBT card denied so woman goes on a rampage in a store. And it's an actual video. This, I hate to say it, but it, I, mean, I don't mean it this way. I'm just saying it just, you know, people are see the video and it's like, oh, you're just talking about this because it's a black woman it is it's a heavy set black lady and it says that this video went viral showing a woman ransacking the store after her ebt card had been declined and it says we're all for help if you need it but food stamp cards are being given out like candy 
The big question is why it took so long for people in the store to push her out. And it goes, it says the last word is geez. Uh, geez. So, yeah, this woman basically, literally, she tears the store completely apart. The guy's like videotaping it on his cell phone. She destroys pretty much three quarters of the store, breaking things, smashing product, you know, food beverages products. Nobody's stopping her for, God, how long is this video? I was hoping I could figure it out by um, video is not found. So they actually took it was on live leak, but the video it looks like might apparently been taken down. I watched it, I think, at work first time. Oh, no, they didn't. It's a minute and seven seconds. It, and she literally and she's going, call the police, call the police. Jesus. But she's literally knocking over shelves. She's throwing shit all over the place. She's literally, because she's upset that she can't use her EBT card. It got turned down. So she destroys three quarters of the store. I mean, how much damage that probably was, adds up to be. So that was pretty interesting. God, I keep on getting, at least got over an hour so far. I don't know how, and I don't want to be up this late. So, um, yeah, nobody stopped her. Why didn't the, the customers who were taping the stuff stop this woman from destroying the store? Even the, the people working the store. It's like, you're going to be out of a job because that person who owns that convenience store is is going to be paying so much money for the damage that this woman made who has no money. She's She's got an EBT card. She's living on food stamps. So I don't understand that. So anyway, another story I got was from USA Today. I just saw this when I was going off. I'm laughing because it's um, by the title, Playboy Mansion Sold to Twinkies Owner. Um, A look at the Playboy Mansion for sale at $200 million was bought by uh, Twinkie owners. Why would you want to buy the Playboy Mansion? Uh, Well, I kind of know why, but is it going to have all the bells and whistles it did when Woody called owned it? I don't know. The Playboy Mansion, uh, the home of Playboy Magazine founder. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. You, yeah, uh, you Hefner. I couldn't remember his freaking name. Is under contract, uh, under contract to be sold to a neighbor, according to property owner, property owner Playboy Enterprise. Darren looks like uh, Metropolis principal and private. Um, equity firm Metropolis and Company, which owns Twinkie Makers Hostess Brands, plans to buy the two uh, twenty thousand square foot house in Homely Hills. Well, it's in Los Angeles neighbor um, neighborhood near Beverly Hills. Looks like Metropolis has agreed. That's the person's name, by the way. Metropolis has agreed to let Hefner. 90 live in it for the rest of his life, though. So that's kind of cool. So he's he's bought the Playboy Mansion. He's made bids or dibs on the house. But he's, since I didn't realize you Hefner was that old, I assumed that, it, I mean, he looks good. Well, he, I mean, I guess if I was 90, year, uh, 90 years old and be able to screw no offense, but screw 20-year-olds that are in his magazine. I guess I would look that as good as you, you uh, Hefner. He might outlive most people, though. That person who now had you know, the Twinkie franchise owner might be in for a rude awakening. I mean, I guess it's just the enterprise, the whole enterprise, literally had basically uh, put bids on the Playboy Mansion, which would I would, would guess would also entitle them maybe to the magazine. I don't know, because that would probably be, a, you know, I would assume like some type of investment on their part. Speaking about investment, by the way, because this is a good way to put this in, I saw this. I couldn't believe this. They were advertising heavily at the convention. It was T-Mobile. They, like, literally were pushing their product. And I have T-Mobile as a hotspot. I don't have them as a phone service because their phone service sucked. Their Internet was excellent. So I gotta care. I gotta hand it to the guy who owns T-Mobile. The the you know basically the guy who owns the entire company. He's done a lot of stuff. He's basically made uh, contract free service. Like you can get T-Mobile 
um, and cancel at any time. There's no contracts. They stopped at now probably like two or so years ago. Um, and they did other bells and whistles. They do have an excellent internet service. They got one of the best, in my opinion. They just have a really horrible phone service. So anyway, they did something new now. It says T-Mobile's Uncarrier 11 uh, free stock gift every Tuesday and in-flight Wi-Fi with GoGo. I've never heard of GoGo. So yes, if you actually get other people to sign up for T-Mobile, they will give you one share of stock, which doesn't sound like a lot. But they said it can go up to that you can actually accumulate up to 100 shares of their stock, which is actually very clever Clever because the more shareholders you have in your company, the stronger your company is going to be. So giving your stock away is not such a bad idea because then you're making an investment by having more shareholders within their, um, your company. So, again, I think that's pretty clever of them. And it was like 13 hours ago this article was posted. It says, in the latest installment of their Uncarrier uh, initiatives, T-Mobile today announced their new Get Thanked campaign. The campaign puts a focus on thanking T-Mobile customers for their loyalty to the company and brand by giving away free, T- again, free T-Mobile stock, gifts, and promotions every Tuesday and in-flight Wi-Fi for domestic uh, flyers with GoGo, which I don't even know about. So this is, goes on a little bit. I'm trying to look at that part of it says you can get up to 100 shares. I mean, I'm going to stop there, and you can read the rest yourself. Starting with stock up, T-Mobile is given both existing, which I am an existing customer, believe it or not, and primary smartphone account holders a share of stock. So technically, I should have at least one share of stock, which isn't a lot, but it's pretty in- impressive. Customers will get a full share of T-Mobile common stock with the chance to be able to grow their own ownership up to 100 shares a year by recommending the carrier to others. It says primary contacts on the smartphone postpaid account will be receiving the free stock, and new customers they also may also qualify for the stock promotion. So I actually do have T-Mobile not as a carrier, but I think I would assume that I would be able to be uh, entitled to one share because I actually do have them once again for um, the Wi-Fi, which I don't use that often or at all right now, so I, I put it on hiatus. But I am still basically a team member, so to speak, of T-Mobile. Um, let's see. Customers who have been with T-Mobile for five years will be receiving two full shares of the stock for each recommendation until 2017, which is in two. Well, we're halfway through the year almost. T-Mobile stock is currently valid at 43.39 a share. Now, that's pretty decent, but if the share does go up, it's really cool, you know, give or take. Let's see what it says. It says something um, about Wi-Fi at the very end of the story, so I'm not sure if it's worth reading or not. Frequent domestic flyers will also be happy to hear, I left out a big chunk, that they will get a full free hour of in-flight Wi-Fi through GoGo, on every Go equipment flight starting June 13th, um, a small but welcome benefit that many users will be able to take advantage of on of at the time of this write-in. GoGo offers an hour of in-flight Wi-Fi for 5 bucks, or an all-day pass for 16 bucks. T-Mobile notes that... All customers are able to text free on GoGo Networks the entire flight, but now iMessage as well. Google hands out what apps, what app, or what's app, never heard of it, and Viber have also been added to the mix. So it says users will be able to use a multitude of networks to stay connected with their loved ones 
as they travel. Travel. So that's pretty interesting. I didn't do a very good job, as always, reading the story, but I thought it was pretty cool because I did stay in there slightly just for, you know, because I thought that personally T-Mobile has a better connection um, in many places on the Internet that Verizon seems to just fail at. Now, Verizon, their cell phone service has actually gone kind of crappy, too, just to let you know. I'm sticking with it because it is better than most. It's just not as good as it used to be either. Um, I on another note, this is pretty cool because they did pick up Supergirl um, on, I guess, CW from the CBS, something like that. But it says Superman to appear on Supergirl casting underway. So they were talking about that last year. There was supposed to be something with Superman actually showing his face. Um, but they're back on that, that they are going to do that. Now, they said Tom Well was supposed to play the part. He's going to do a cameo because he played uh, basically Superboy, which, by the way, I was watching. There was a TV series that lasted two years, actually, that was called Superboy. And it's pretty hard to get through. It's a, It's got that 80s feel to it. It is actually 1988 when it first came out. It only lasted two years, barely made it to 1990. Um, but the show was pretty interesting i guess it was actually shot believe it or not that was funny back in 1988 when they did the original superboy which then they went back and they revamped and that's how uh, smallville came about because that's superboy also but um yeah it said that the superboy show that lasted two years by the way was actually done by disney so that was funny disney actually had their clutches on this way before anybody else did on buying up um, the you know superhero market, so to speak, and other things like Star Wars and stuff like that. So Disney's uh is one of the biggest, um, what do you call it? If you want to work for anybody, that's what I always wanted to do. If I had my dream come true, would be the work for Walt Disney. And it's like, well, that's just for kid stuff. Disney owns pretty much, there's like four or five corporations out there that own absolutely everything and guess what disney is definitely one of them so you got to rethink before you um when you say well that's just a kid's thing disney owns everything almost at this point so why would you not want to have disney um so that that being said just want to let you know oh wow no wonder why this was so cheap. I'm sorry. I'm looking at that again with that um, that Avengers Captain America shield. The shield is only fifty bucks. The shipping they made a hundred and forty six dollars. So actually, I was going to buy one for my friend, but after I saw that price, uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's just a gimmick. Um, they're selling the metal shield, liter- literally the metal shield shield of Captain America. For sixty bucks with four hundred and sixty dollars shipping, um, they better not only overnight it before I would even end that transaction. They better put it in my um, in my hand by the end of my shell. So that's the new gimmick they're doing now. I didn't even catch wind of that. I'm glad I I noticed that now. There's one here for forty six dollars, a Captain America shield, and the shipping cost is four hundred and ten dollars. Um, the whole gimmick is, oh, well, we make it look like it's cheap and we're giving these people a good deal. Yeah. And this is the metal one. They're going to, they're going to hit buy now, but then they're going to be, um, walloped when they get a bill for five, $600. So that's pretty clever. And by the way, if you get the metal one from, uh, especially cat toys, since I'm back on that shield thing, the one thing that is kind of impressive, by the way, though, um, with the Captain America shield is they actually do put it in a wooden box, like like a well-made, structured wooden box, and it actually has a name. I can't find any pictures of it right now, but they actually put the name on the box of, I guess, that organization of the that the Avengers work with. It's like on the box. So, I mean, if you're a, a true believer of the movies and you really, really like it, it is actually pretty cool. 
But um, some of these prices are just really freaking ridiculous. So there it's gone. Hey, I saw this real quick, folks. It's going on 5 o'clock, as always, and i got to get up this afternoon. Um, a friend put this up, and I basically took the story and put it up on Facebook because I'm not afraid to hide the truth. But it was from media, um, Mediate.com, and it says, title of it at least says, Home Depot founder, uh, founder sorry about that, Home Depot founder, um, Fails to become official sponsor of Mexican, no, Mexico-American Wall endorses Trump. So that's pretty cool. The guy, the co uh, the, the basically the founder, not co-founder, the founder of Home Depot has now put and will back up and support um, and endorse Donald Trump. So that's really cool. I kind of made some jokes. I said, well, there goes your uh, their profit shares on selling lawnmowers now. I know that's probably very politically incorrect, but whoever said I was, I did make that comment to a, the person who opposed it that, by the way. I'm not joking. Hopefully I did in a private message, too, I guess. No, my luck, I probably didn't. Um, hey, you know what? I'm just going to look. I saw this story earlier. I did not read it. It's not funny. I know. It sounds like I'm laughing. Two women, two women convicted after a boy, two years old, punched in the chest so hard that his heart was uh, had ruptured. Scotland, a couple uh, have been convicted of murdering a woman's two-year-old son in the case that being called one of the most shocking child abuse trials ever to take place in Scottish court. Before we get um, to the convictions, here are some background, and you can read that on Christopher Morbid Lee, by the way. So I'm, I'm giving you a little bit of a cliffhanger because you don't want me to read these stories. Um, I did put up some interesting videos. There's one video. It's... I stole from somebody or I had bar, uh, taken as a share from somebody. It really freaked me out. There's this hot chick. She's getting into a, a tan salon, hot blonde. It's really bad video quality, though. She gets into a, a tanning booth salon, and you, you like, okay, it's got to be. It was from a horror site. We'll see what happens again. And the booth shuts on her and basically breaks her in um, and twists her backwards or something. And it is... Extreme, the very end of it, because you don't see that coming, is extremely disgusting, So, in my opinion. Not that they show blood or anything. It's just the whole premise is really disgusting. So there was that. Um, there's been a couple stories I saw, so I don't know. Um, to, to, to a couple links. I don't know if to believe this or not, but a, it's titled, this one in particular, on those on Easter Island, those heads. It says... New secrets of Easter Island statues revealed that the heads have bodies underneath the ground. So I read two stories. I don't know. I think it's just um, they ran out of things to talk about. So now we're talking about these heads on Easter Island. So that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't read the whole story, by the way. And there was just something they're showing. The, I don't like these rides, but they're showing some ride. And I found it on horrific stuff. It's a, a link on. Um, Facebook, and it's one of these rides that just go swirl around, and you're you're like strapped into like this amusement ride, which shows that somebody literally got flung or jettisoned out of the ride. And this is not the first time like stuff like this happened. Um, so yeah, that's always an issue with me with these rides. I don't think they're that safe, no matter how much they act like they are. So that yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I could find some stuff I can talk about, but it is my normal time slot almost, so I'm probably going to let it go. I'm just doing a last look. Actually, this was pretty interesting. She actually looks really good. I'm surprised. It's Florence Henderson, because she's got to be up there really in age. But it was on MeTV they posted this. Florence Henderson uh, envisions a reboot for the Brady Bunch. Now, I know she had some cryptic things going on where I heard I thought I heard rumors years ago that she was actually sleeping with the guy who was a kid at the time back then because the the guy who played the husband in the show he was gay in real life I can't remember his name 
But Florence Henderson, um, I thought she was sleeping with the oldest one who was supposed to be her son. In real life, I heard she was fooling around with the guy. I thought I heard that. Now, for her age, she actually looks pretty damn good. Um, so, and again, I don't know how old she is. I could probably look it up real quick. So I'm kind of actually, quite honestly, I'm pretty curious myself. And that's like one of my last stories anyway, almost. Because I don't have, I have never thought Florence Henderson was that incredible again. She's 82, and she actually looks pretty good for her. 82 years old, she actually looks pretty good. Um, personally, I think she looks better now than she did when she was even younger. I mean, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but, um, yeah. This is 2014. But honestly, when you look closely, you can tell she looks like she probably got a little bit of plastic surgery done, too. I mean, you can tell she's in, she's much, you know, she's like grandmother age. But at the same time, for a person who's 82, she actually looks pretty damn good, considering. Um, so I was just kind of impressed by the, what she, you know, what they, I, again, I, I, she's not like on the top of my list as being like credible looking. Um, even back then when she did it, um, doing the Brady Bunch the first time around, I, I thought she was okay looking. I didn't think she was hot. Was in like spanking it to, uh, Florence Henderson when I was a little kid. I'll tell you that much. So, yeah, okay, here it is. Barry Williams who played the oldest son. Apparently, I thought I heard there was something going on. Robert Reed was the guy who was the father, but he was gay in real life, which is what I remember. Maureen McCormick, I guess she played the oldest daughter. She actually looks pretty damn good still. She's got to be up there. She's born in, she's 59, she's 60 then. Barry Williams, he didn't look like he aged that well. Um, He's 61, actually. Just going through with the ones I can find. Robert Reed died in 92. Um, I wonder if it was... I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but I wonder if it was AIDS or something like that, because he wasn't that old. Um, He was born in 32, and he passed away in 92. Well, it says he was actually married, though. They said uh, Marilyn Rosenberg was his wife from um, 1954. Well, never mind. He was only married for like five years. I heard him personally in real life he was gay, so I don't know. I didn't even know he could have, you know, obviously he got married, um, but just to cover up the truth. Now, I know Ann B. Davis, she just passed away recently. Um, she was born in 1926. She died June 1st, 2014. So actually that's been like two years ago. I didn't even know. I thought it was more recent than that that she just passed away. Um, Susan Olson. Yes, her last name is Olson. Um, she played Cindy Brady. She doesn't look that great. Um... She was born in 1961. She's 54. She looks pretty bad, in my opinion. Um, well, she was married twice, I guess. Married 1995 to 2004. And before, prior to that, she was married 1988 to 1990. So, And she doesn't look that great at all. I can see the sun come up, so that's not a good sign for me. She was a cute kid. And no, I didn't find her sexually attractive as like um, a five-year-old, but um, I'm just saying she just did not age that well at all. A lot of these kid actors, though, they get into a lot of drugs, too. I'm sure that's part of the reason. But yeah, it was just weird because I see, like, again, she actually looks much better now, and she's, what, 82 was Florence Henderson. She actually looks much better now than she did for quite a while. I mean, she doesn't look like she's 20 years old anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying she looked better. 
Um, now, here's an interesting story. I totally forgot about this. This is actually a sad story from Daily Mail. It was this cat that made it to be 25 years old, a cat. You know, cats can live long times, a you know, house cat, lived to be 25 years old, and then um, what killed the cat, it's sitting human years, that's 118 for a cat. But they said the cat got killed by a teenage thug. And it's in the Daily Mail newspaper, so you could see it there online, of course. Now, talking about cats, I'll probably, maybe I'll leave it at go at this, because this is really, really funny. Um, from Live Leaks, my friend, little friend Matt, put this up, and it says, what your cat does when he goes out um, is amazing. Like, it's supposed to be, okay, these people, and this one guy I work with, he, he has a cat, his family has a cat, and they were going to do the same thing, but they put a go cam cam on this cat to see where the cat's going during its you know its rounds. So the thing is a is a as a goof because what happens is the cat goes and he trips somebody off a bike. He holds somebody at knife point, and all you see is like these fake paws and um and whiskers, and then he goes to. Like, I think, pick up alcohol. He goes to bar and is, like, doing these drinks. And they ask, they, I, they card the cat for just checking his age. So he's getting, like, like really hard drinks, getting drunk. And then the cat goes to a strip joint, and he's putting dollar bill. I mean, you know, yeah, he's putting dollar bills in the stripper's um, thong. So it's really, really funny, in my opinion. I thought it was hilarious. But the cat's, like, doing all this stuff. And then there's one part where the cat's looking in the mirror. And you just see the cat look with the go cam around her neck. Um, so the whole thing I thought was hilarious. I have to show this one person at work, friend, because, I, you know, again, he's married. He's got kids. He's around my age and uh, maybe a little older. I don't know. But he'll get a kick out of it. It's like, yeah, he says, oh, yeah, my son wanted me to buy a go cam for our cat to see what the cat was doing. And it was like, but the cat would probably not like it around its neck because they're pretty big. Even the small ones are big. And it's just the whole thing is hilarious, though, I thought. So anyway, that's a good word to lead the story as I see the sun rise. So everyone, folks, I hope you enjoy my show. I did do an hour and a half. Once again, I'm really proud of myself. And have a good um, morning. This is Walter from Maya Walter, and I'm going to make it simple. I'm just going to sign off for now, and I will be back later on. Thanks again for listening to me. And it is now almost 5 o'clock.